This is your Barbados Today evening to Sunday, the Friday, October 29th. A 25-year-old man became the youngest person to have died from COVID-19 in Barbados today. He was a primary care patient at the Harrison Point Isolation Facility. He was unvaccinated. His death brings to 152 the number of lives lost to the viral illness. Meanwhile, the island recorded 369 new cases from 2,000 313 tests conducted by the Best of Santos Public Health Laboratory. 5,382 persons are in home isolation and 784 persons are in isolation facilities. The government is earnestly continuing its vaccination drive and to date a total of 124,798 persons, that's 46% of the total population or 54.6% of the eligible population are fully vaccinated. Meanwhile, Barbadians are flocking to get their booster shots and the response has pleased co-coordinator of the National COVID-19 Vaccination Campaign, Dr. Elizabeth Ferdinand, who says considerations are being made to increase the categories of persons who can get their third shot. President of the Barbados Society of Psychology, Dr. Jennifer Deanne Ford, is concerned about the well-being of healthcare workers who are facing increasing pressure as coronavirus infections continue to rise. She shared her views while delivering 50 wellness packages for the workers at the Harrison Point Isolation Facility today. For me, the first stress that I recognize is having to leave their family in the care of somebody else to come and serve our family. And then in this pandemic, what has made it worse is that you are taking home unknowns. So you get home and you have to strip everything off, clean, wash, before you could actually run and hug your family. And now with the surge, we know we are asking people to keep masks on all the time, even in their home, and that's a second stress. And then what about meals? We don't know how the system here operates, but if you're with a patient who needs you, can you imagine have to say, I am hungry, I have to run off? And then, of course, our nurses are humans too. Our caretakers are humans too. They have medication to take. They might be themselves having issues with their mental and medical health, physical health. It is very strenuous for a small island like Barbados to cater to everybody's needs. And we saw a need to get involved and to help. Harrison's Point Isolation Manager Ingrid Cattlerow welcomed the kind gesture she told reporters the ongoing battle against COVID-19 is tough on workers. This could not have come at a better time because right now we know what we're in the middle of. We're in the middle of a massive surge. And it has been, it has been trying, we have been trying now to, to just call on our last bit of strength mm -hmm. at this point because we, as persons would know, we don't have all the staff that we need at, at this time. Um, persons would have are supposed to go on vacation, they have, would have had to, to um, forget about vacation. And it is difficult to get a mental break if you have to be on call 24 hours. Um, and all of us have had to do that based on what is happening in Barbados. So we want to say a massive thank you to um, the Psychologist um, Society. It is wonderful when persons in corporate Barbados and the wider societies think about, think about us and remember us. Um, so staff don't really, they, they understand that they aren't really forgotten and amidst everything, persons are supportive still. So that is really and truly the most invaluable part of it. Breast cancer remains a major cause of death in Barbados. Word of this from Acting Medical Coordinator of the Breast Screening Program of the Barbados Cancer Society, Dr. Stephanie Date, who says this is cause for concern. Right now, breast cancer ranks second for the most common cancer in Barbados, and that's second only to prostate cancer. Last year alone, we had 189 cases of breast cancer diagnosed in Barbados, and we had 111 recorded deaths secondary to this disease. And unfortunately, um, the global can, this global uh, survey that was done last year showed that Barbados has the highest world mortality rate um, recorded in the world right now, unfortunately. Barbados is currently observing Breast Cancer Awareness Month, and she's urging more women and men to come forward for screening, noting that the process has been made easier with a new multi-million dollar mammogram machine 
at the Barbados Cancer Society. A lot of the time, both men and women are very scared to come forward and get a mammogram. They hear that it hurts and it takes so long. It's no longer the case with this machine. This machine is more precise. Um, we can actually use it on persons with small or large breasts, men and women, all ages. And it's a lot more precise and accurate as well. So we're very excited about this. There's regional and international news after this short break. Hi, I am Onika. I am a mother, I am a daughter, and I am a wine educator. When vaccines first came on the scene last year, I was really apprehensive about getting vaccinated. I was worried about taking a drug that I felt was experimental, so at first, I really wasn't about it. I decided to get vaccinated. I had to acknowledge the fact that I am asthmatic, and my son is also asthmatic. I have a career in wine. We depend on our senses, and I decided that I did not want to risk it for being afraid of taking a vaccine. Coronavirus has affected everyone around the globe. And keeping this in mind, make sure that your decision is not a selfish one and that you're thinking of the benefits of the whole. Let's roll up our sleeves and get back to living. To regional developments, the Antigua and Barbuda Senate today approved an amendment to the Education Act, which now makes it mandatory for all eligible school children to take the COVID-19 vaccine to attend school. This is nothing new. We are simply strengthening the legislation. As a child going to school, I remember very well that my parents had to produce an immunization card. Remember, when I became an adult and was thinking of going off to university, one of the requirements was that you produce that card and a medical certificate from a doctor. The 2008 Education Act mandates that primary school students must be vaccinated for school admission. Leader of Government Business in the Senate, Senator Mary Claire Hurst, explains the effect of Friday's amendment. This has been changed now to make the requirements applicable to both primary and secondary level by deleting the word primary from the shopping opening sentence, Madam President, and just to say each child is required to show proof of immunization as prescribed by. Senator Harris says this is to ensure the student's safety and encourages parents to let their children take the vaccine to return to face-to-face -face classes. Madam President, it appeared to me as if we want to make sure that our children, Madam President, get back to school. We are saying you're going to school. You are welcome to come back, but not without your immunization card and make sure that you are vaccinated. It is important, Madam President, because it is your life. Do us a favor and choose life. On the international scene, the U.S. Food and Drug Administration today authorized Pfizer's BioNTech lower-dose COVID-19 vaccine for children ages 5 to 11. The move is being closely monitored in Canada, where there is pushback from public employees facing vaccine requirements. The FDA granted emergency use authorization of Pfizer's COVID-19 vaccine for children ages 5 to 11. The CDC meets next week to consider its recommendation for that age group, which would make millions of kids eligible for the shot. It comes amid pushback from some public employees facing vaccine requirements. They only see what they want to believe. However, they become true believers once they're preparing to get intubated. The Chicago City Council held an emergency meeting Friday to address Mayor Lori Lightfoot's order that all city employees disclose their vaccination status. We've got to take the drama and the politics out of this. New York City municipal workers, including police and firefighters, without a first shot will be put on unpaid leave come Monday, something union leaders say could cost lives. It's been challenging for them to get the vaccine. Uh, most of them work two jobs. Sometimes they do overtime all week. Here in New York City, the police union tried to block Mayor Bill de Blasio's mandate 
Friday, they hosted a retirement fair for officers who chose to retire rather than take the shot. City officials are finalizing contingency plans to deal with a shortage of first responders. The first step would be reassignment of personnel that ordinarily are not doing patrol functions. The FDNY expects to operate some firehouses on a limited basis and have fewer ambulances on the road. New York Governor Kathy Hochul says she'll offer state assistance if needed. That's news, but for the very latest, visit our website at www.barbidastoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook. And sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on Izumi Media and Bus Terminals, as well as Screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. You can also hear us on Mix 96.9 FM and Capital Media HD 99.3 FM.